Welcome to Finding Holiness, where we delve into timeless Torah wisdom, revealing the sacred in everyday moments. Join us on a journey to elevate your spirituality and discover holiness in every aspect of life. I'm your host, Rabbi David Kadosh, and together, let's embark on a path of spiritual exploration. I hope you enjoy this next episode. All right. And if Tov, we're continuing with Perek Yud Gimel of Masechet Yevamot. Mishnah Zayin. The rest of the uh, the rest of the Perek is going to deal primarily with um, a man who is married to um, two underage or sometimes um, underprivileged women, and um, and what is it, what is the status of if the husband was to die and they fall into Yibum, what's gonna what's the status with regards to each one of them being that there there's there's co-wives uh, involved? So quite a few different cases here that uh, the parak uh, begins to explain. So Mishnah Zayin starts like this: Shene Achin Nesuin Lishte Achayot Yetomot Ketano. Two brothers are married to two sisters, and both of them were underage, and both of them were orphans. So that means their marriage was rabbinic. Umet ba'ala shel achat mehen. The husband of one of the uh, sisters died without children. So the Mishnah says, Tetzet. The widow goes out free. She's not obligated to any yibum obligation. She doesn't require yibum. She doesn't require halitza. Mishum achot isha, being that, that uh, she is the wife's sister. So therefore, she is exempt uh, because of the rabbinic erva. The same law would apply if two sisters who are both deaf-mute and were married to brothers. Um, in that situation as well, they are both recognized only by rabbinic law. So if one of the husbands was to die, um, they are uh, they're exempt. Now, if one of the sisters was an adult and another one was underage, and then again, one of the husbands died. So the law depends on which one died. Met bala shel ketana. If the husband of the underage sister died, then she would fall to yibum to the um, to her adult sister's husband. And the alacha says tetzia ketana mishum achotisha. The underage sister is exempt because of achot uh, achotisha. She's the wife's sister. Now met bala shel gedola. If the husband of the adult sister died, so now the widow falls for Yibum on a biblical level to the, because she's an adult, to the Yavam, to the brother, but the brother only has a rabbinic marriage with the sister, with the younger sister. So we have three opinions as to what the law is. Rabbi Eliezer Omer, Rabbi Eliezer says, We tell the underage uh, girl, sister, she has to make mi'un to her husband, okay, the current one that she's with, that erases the marriage retroactively. We spoke about that in the last couple of days. It's as if they were never married. And um, the widow is uh, no longer forbidden to the <coughs> Yavam, even on a rabbinic ne- le- uh, level, and he can marry her and fulfill the mitzvah of Yibum. That's what Rabbi Eliezer suggests to do. No, one, one, no, there's no two sisters. It's with two brothers to two sisters. Two brothers to two sisters. Oh, well, one of the brothers, one of the brothers died. But she, there's, there's, she has her sister also. What? She has her sister. No, so she performs miun, so she's out of the out of that marriage, so she's gone. Goodbye. Okay, and now the other brother, the, uh, the other one, does the boob with the uh, with the with the brother. Rabban Gamliel Omer, Rabban Gamliel says, ana, if the underage sister makes miun. On her own, then me'ana she makes miun, and it's and the marriage is uh, undone. So, like we said, she can perform. Um, uh, the husband can now perform yibum with the adult sister. Ve'im lav, but if the underage sister does not perform miun on her own, tamtin ad she tagdil, then she remains with her husband until she becomes an adult. At which point, when the underage sister gets older, becomes an adult, adult, that marriage is now biblically recognized. And then the widow will go out free because she's a wife's sister. So there's no yibum or anything involved. That's the opinion of Rabban Gamliel. The third opinion of Yoshua, 
Rabbi Yoshua says, Ilo al ishto ve'ilo al eshet aviv. Woe to the Yavam over his own wife and woe to the Yavam over his brother's wife. There's no way to make them permissible to him. So he says, Mosi ishto beget ve'eshet achi b'chalitza. He has to send his wife away with a get and then he has to, um, then he performs chalitza with, uh, with the brother's, with the brother's wife. A man was married to two underage orphan girls. Um, not sisters, they just happened to be two underage girls. Vamet, and he died. So now both girls fall to Yibum, to, uh, to the brother. The moment there is cohabitation, which is Yibum, or Chalitza of one of the wives with the Yavam, now the co-wife is exempt and she's free to remarry uh, without first receiving one of these uh, things from herself. And similarly, the same law applies if the two girls were deaf mutes. Again, they were the rabbinic marriage, so one of them exempts. Ketana v'chereshet, if one of the co-wives is a ketana, she's underage, and the other one is deaf mute, chereshet, now... They're b- both of the marriages are rabbinic, but in this case, they're not both the same type. One is underage, one is deaf mute. Uh, in that situation, the cohabitation of one of them does not exempt the co-wife. It's not the same type. Pikachat vechereshet. If one of the wives is normal, pikachat, uh, therefore her marriage is biblical, and the other one is deaf mute. Chereshet, and she is, um, it's a rabbinic marriage. Bi'at ha-pikachat potret ha-chereshet. If the, um, the Yavam cohabits with the normal pikachat, then that exempts the chereshet, the deaf mute goes out on her own. However, en bi'at ha-chereshet potret ha-pikachat. But if he chooses to cohabit with the deaf mute, that does not exempt, um, uh, the normal wife because that Yibum act with the deaf mute is only on a rabbinic level. Um, so therefore, it cannot exempt the co-wife or the normal wife, the pikachat, who requires yibum or chalitza under biblical law. Gedola uktana, similar to these two girls, one of them is an adult, okay, which means a biblically recognized marriage, and the other one is ketana, underage wife, that's rabbinic marriage. Biata gedola poteret eta ketana, if he performs cohabitation with the adult wife that exempts the underage wife, but if he, per, if he performs yibum with the younger one, that does not exempt the adult one for the same reason as we said before. A, a rabbinic yibum cannot exempt one that's biblical. A man was married to two underage orphan girls and he died. Um, and now they both fall to Yibum to the man's brother. By Yavam al If the Yavam uh, cohabited and uh, performed Yibum with one of the girls, Bechazar Ubal Hashenia. And then he went and lived with the second girl. Or Ba'achiv al Or his brother went and lived with the second girl. Lo Pasalet Arishona. None of these uh, latter cohabitations disqualify the first. The, the first uh, girl, the first Yibum act that, w- that was made. Um, once Yibum was performed the first time with the first girl, there's no longer any Yibum act to fulfill, and therefore the second act of cohabitation was was not an act of Yibum. It does nothing to prohibit the uh, the first girl's marriage. The same applies to two deaf mutes. Uh, if, if, if that was the situation, the same rule would apply. Ketana v'chereshet. If one of the wives was underage and the other wife was deaf mute, which means both are married only rabbinically, this is the law. If the Yavam cohabited with the younger one, and then he cohabited with the deaf mute, or he went with the, he went first one with the underage and his brother went with the chereshet. Lo ketana. Again, similar law. He does not disqualify the underage girl from remaining married to the Yavam. However, Ba Yavam ala chereshet v'chazar u bala ketana. But if the Yavam first went with the deaf mute and then went with the underage girl, or sheba achiv ala ketana, or his brother went with the underage girl, pasal et chereshet, he disqualifies the deaf mute from being able um, 
to stay married to the to the Yavam. The reason is because the marriage to a deaf mute, although it's rabbinic and it's kind of on the same level, Chachamim explained the Gemara that it's slightly less of a marriage than that to an underage. Uh, that's an underage girl, um, and therefore the the it's it's not it's discharged. The yibum is discharged as a result. Pikachat vechereshet. Uh, maybe one more Mishnah. Pikachat vechereshet. If he was married to two wives, a normal wife, that's a pikachat, and a chereshet, a deaf mute, so a biblical and a rabbinic, and now he died, and his brother falls him on yibum. By yavam ala pikachat, if the yavam first went with the normal wife, uvechazaru ba'al chereshet, and then li- lived with the deaf mute, or shebarachiv ala chereshet, or his brother lived with the chereshet, lo pasal et pikachat. This does not disqualify the uh, the normal wife from staying married with the yavam. However, but if the Yavam first went with the Hereshet, uh, the deaf mute, and then went with the Pikachat, or then after, or after he went to the deaf mute, the brother went with the Pikachat, in that case, he disqualifies the deaf mute from staying married to the Yavam. You know, the deaf mute's marriage was only rabbinic in, in nature. Uh, when the Yavam uh, lived with her, and therefore he did not fulfill the biblical obligation of doing so. So when he goes with the um, with the pikahat, it, it, she, it disqualifies the deaf mute from staying uh, with him. Okay, we'll stop here.